my name is Undead Jinx, and welcome to Sucker for Love First Date Chapter 2. Chapter 2! The King in Yellow Approaches. Well, okay. I didn't realize they were gonna say it. I forgot about that. <laughs> in a world terrorized by slavering shadows and tentacled nightmares, something as innocuous as an additional star in the night sky may be the most prophetic premonition of doom. For wherever the lurid, golden light of the planet Carcosa shines, the long, wicked shadow of the king in yellow is cast. Where have we seen this? Carcosa? The baby in yellow! Behind that mask lie echoes of decadence and disorder, masquerades of limitless cruelty and hideous laughter in equal part. And of all the poor devils seduced by the lavish promises of the god king's court, the favored victims of the king's sadistic amusement are followers belonging to other deities. Huh? What? Where? Huh? Did I zone out? What I was... What was I doing? Damn. I'm having one hell of a brain fart. I can't remember for the life of me what I'm supposed to be doing. Everything feels so hazy. Yo! Big sun? Big moon? Was I going to work? I'm standing outside, after all. Yeah, that's gotta be it. The sun is setting, so it's probably around 7pm, which means I'm gonna be crazy late. Fantastic. That's the beauty of working nights. I can't use the excuse that I overslept. Yeah, boss, I slept all day. Sun up to sun down. That's why I'm... Six hours early for my shift, huh? Those sound like the church's noontime bells. It's... High noon? No way. They must be doing some special evening service or something. I can clearly see that it's golden hour right before sunset. I'll just have to ask someone for the time on my way to work. If it's not too late and I really hoof it, I'll get chewed out instead of fired. I'll still have to deal with being sweaty, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Oh, uh, someone's coming. Perfect. Fingers crossed that I'm not absolutely screwed. Hey man, sorry to bother you. You wouldn't happen to have the time on you, would ya? Hello? Hey. Um, hey? Is this guy ignoring me? Normally I'd say whatever and walk away, but he's unfortunately standing in the only stairway of this floor. Off this floor. The only way to exit this conversation is to shove past him, but this guy is giving me such weird vibes, I don't want to go anywhere near him. The longer I look at him, this guy seems more and more suspicious. That odd posture. He's slowly swaying in an uncanny, disturbing way. The collar of his shirt looks filthy, stained with splotched of deep browns and reds. Is he bleeding? Does he even live here? This is the top floor, and I thought I've met all my neighbors. There are only four apartments up here. My only choices are to go inside and call the police, or to walk past this freaky guy. And I don't have time to wait around for when the cops show up, so well... But just as I take a step, I kick something weighty with my shoe. It's bright pink with gold accents. A book? What? Ugh! Lanaha, but I died! The world ended. The shock freezes me in place. Oh my god, there's so many of them. And because I was so distracted, I didn't even notice the... I duck inside my room, slamming the door in the suspicious man's face. Fumbling with the locks in a panic, I manage to turn the deadbolt. Oh, it's smooch time. I take a few fearful steps back into the room, clutching the book to my beating chest. I died. I definitely died when I performed a fi the final ritual, so why am I still here? Where is here? Locked in my room, I have nowhere to run. Laneha! Laneha! If Laneha was here, she could explain this. Maybe there's something in this book that can save me. I need to hurry. Come on, come on, Laneha. Laneha, where are you? Laneta, huh? Who is this Laneta you're so trying it to call? Is Laneta? Missy, what are you doing in my room? I just so happened to overhear you saying, Laneta, where are you? You sounded like you were in trouble, so I let myself in. Past the dudes outside? Yeah. How did you even get in Your here? window was open. Oh. Huh? No, it's not. And either way, I'm on the top floor, so how did you- Lynetta sounds like a girl's name, right? This Lynetta is obviously the girl you stood me up for, isn't she? What is her deal? I knew she'd be pissed. I slammed that door in her face. But not so much that she wouldn't notice any of the things obviously wrong here. Why doesn't she care about those freaky things stalking me outside? Or that my room is full of evil idols and ritualistic tokens? I can explain all this stuff. Let me guess. Cursed devices used to channel eldritch magics and do the bidding of outer gods. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, exactly right. Did you just randomly guess that? Oh, I've just been playing coy. Oh. I know exactly what you've been doing. You know what this is, don't you? Yes! It's a golden version of my book, the book I used to perform rituals for Lynetta. Hers looks way more ornate than mine. Considering I ended reality with mine, I can't imagine how dangerous hers must be. Wait a minute. The sky? 
That suspicious man outside, they all match Missy's look. I am the look. Is she making all of this happen? Oh god. When I expected her to do something crazy, I thought she was just gonna show up with a hatchet or something. Missy, look. I'm sorry. I got wrapped up in something. Please don't. Sorry? You're sorry? Why are you acting so afraid of me? Cause you're a little scary, Missy. <laughs> Did her eye patches just switch? I know all too well, but I also know that these incantations can take at least five seconds to pronounce, and that's if she gets it right on the first try. So worst case, I have five minutes to stop her. If I dash for my ritual knife behind her, I might be able to kill her before she does something terrible to me. If I can distract her, I might be able to buy myself more time. Missy, look, I'll do whatever you want. Anything? And now it's back. It can be rather demanding. Name your price. So bold. In that case, I have three commands. Number okay. one, you'll address me as your highness from now on. So when I come home, it's welcome home, your highness. When she comes home, she wants to move in. But that means, whatever. It's not like I'm going to have to actually follow through on these. At least one of us is about to die. As you wish, your highness. What else? Number two. You'll quit your job so you can spend every waking moment catering to me. You're one and only. Is she loaded? Sure, whatever. Just a little bit more until I'm sprinting in sprinting range of the knife. And number three. You'll obey every order and whim I have, absolutely, without question. Well? Do you agree to my terms? Sure, absolutely. Absolutely what? Absolutely, your highness. Whatever I ask, then there's no need to use any of these dreadful spells on you. Okay. As a matter of fact, I believe you can help me with them. Here. She just handed over her book without a second thought. Yellow energy pulses and crackles from my fingertips. She is not here to hurt me? Oh, confused. I've liked you for a long time. And you're a capable bookkeeper. Yeah. Handsome to boot. Stop. There's no reason we can't simply work together. I guess. After all, a relationship based on threats of violence and fear is no good, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely no good. <laughs> right. We narrowly escaped with our lives just now. But something is bothering me. How does she remember that I stood her up in the reality that ended under Lynetta's awakening? And how did she get in through my window? I doubt she was able to climb several stories dressed like that and then pass through my locked window without breaking it. And how do I remember it, if all that happened in another reality? <laughs> There's only one possible answer. All right, your highness, I'm ready to enter my lifetime of servitude to you. I just have one small request first. Being? Could you tell me what this is? Huh? Your Worcestershire sauce? What about it? So, you're an eldritch god disguised as a human. What? How did you figure that out so suddenly? Because only eldritch gods can pronounce Worcestershire sauce. Isn't it obvious? No human being can pronounce Worst, Worcest, where? Worcestershire. Of course not. It's an eldritch alone word. Why else would it be spelled like that? <laughs> yeah. I was careless. After all this time, I wasted trying to seduce you in this slovenly form. Yeah, you should have tried using your eldritch form instead. I could have fallen in love with you sooner, I think that's what that said. What? You think cosmic entities are attractive? As a human. Well, I mean, since you asked, Missy, 3D women are fine, but fourth dimensional girls with non elucidian geometry are smoking. They've got curves I can literally get lost in. <laughs> if I had known that you're attracted to my cosmic godhood, I would have just led with that. These games have me dying. This game has me dying. Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Esther, King in Yellow. To Carcosa. Charmed, I'm sure. She's gorgeous, a bona fide eldritch king in my room. Oh man, all of my fantasies of smooching and eldritch horror are coming true. An eldritch royalty to boot. The king in yellow. Sounds familiar, I can't remember why. My memory of all my other existence is kind of fuzzy. What I do remember is that her followers tend to be incredibly violent towards cultists, loyal to other gods, like Lynetta. Shit. 
I kind of got swept up in the moment and almost forgot I had already pledged fealty to a different god, this reality or not. Uh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm already involved with another god. I'm following Lynetta. I know. So loyal, so faithful and devoted. That's why I want you to be my follower instead. Okay. In for serving me, I shall grant you anything you desire. Wealth, power, whatever that rotten witch Lynetta offered you, I can double it. Well, I died, so she promised me a smooch. And I shall... What, what, what? <laughs> you handed over your reality to her? For a singular smooch? Are you mad? Kinda. You heard me. So you'll match her offer then? I if that's all you're selling the world for, then a smooch can be uh, arranged. And that would be funny if, like, there were six, because that's literally double what Lynetta gave. No way! You promised to double it. That's two smooches. No, hold on a minute! Two of them. On the lips. I'm right, very well. Two smooches, lip to lips. Satisfied? I suppose. I just... I just Oh. <laughs> Usually, my followers ask for inordinate wealth, unquestionable fame, and influence, or some lavish indulgence. Okay. Nobody's ever dared to ask to kiss me before, so... She's blushing for real. You really want to smooch me? Well, <clears throat> your terms are amenable. Suffice it to say, I'll expect you to perform your scenes flawlessly in exchange. Scenes? The prompt book I gave you contains the script for the king in yellow. Huh? You mean the spell book that I was so afraid of? It's just a goddamn play? This thing is just a playbook? Where are all the power invoking rituals? Rituals? Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? No. No. We aren't barbaric swamp folk casting hocus pocus in a cave. We have a little class. To invoke my power, my play must be performed perfectly. Okay, <laughs> perfectly. I don't always get these rituals, uh, I mean scenes, right the first time. What happens if I botch my lines or get a scene wrong? Your performance will receive a scathing review in the Carcosan Times publication, and you'll also be killed. Okay, that really puts things into perspective. I'm getting those smooches, no matter what. Break a leg, dearest. Thank you! Objective, perform act one. Click and drag, slowly. Um, what do we have to do to prepare for this scene? Oh, oh, we can talk to her now. Hi. Hey, Esther. Don't do that. Do what? What? All I did was say Don't hello. Speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she who is not to be named. A mortal saying Esther summons me to them. What? If I can't say your name, what am I supposed to call you? You have many options. You may call me your majesty, your grace, my king. Or your highness. <laughs> you could even call me your royal highness if you're feeling particularly subservient. I was basically getting there. Esther, Esther, Esther. <laughs> Stop that! That's funny. Okay, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be wearing. But, I'm a just, I don't know. Wow, I look great. Greetings, stranger found fellow. Tis a party for which I bellow. I invite the king in yellow. And now I, I'm dead. I got a bad end. <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't realize there were different, different difference. Oh, cool. Setting exterior in view of city. I don't really know what's going on here. Greetings, stranger fellow. Tis a party for which I bellow. I invite the <laughs> Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to wear anything. Is it because I'm just going too slow? Is that what it is? Click and drag the first word of the first line slowly. <laughs> So you die if you go too fast. I'm so confused. Why is it... Why is it doing that? It says... <laughs> I literally looked it up. It just says perform act one. I'm literally trying to perform act one, but it's just not working. Why? Oh wow, and there's six endings for this. Holy shit. I'm so confused. Why does it keep saying go outside when that happens? 
Oh, jeez. We're supposed to go to the balcony outside? Oh, exterior and view of city. I don't know how. I just thought we were imagining this setting. So that's why it said go outside. Okay, I was like, what? Uh, greetings, strange wife. For Fortuned in yellow, tis a party for which I bellow. I invite the king in yellow, so come all ye in till Wear thy masks upon you to my masquerade until he may come to lost until. Hope for us, there may be still. Shadows lengthen dim streets darken, to the curfew thou must hearken, why so loudly dost thou bark in the dim city of Yatil? It is Yatil. Only much attention, quite unwholesome you'll instill from the souls of poor Yatil. Why attract so much ill will? Perform a perfect recitation. That is just what I must seek, see, hidden somewhere amongst the minkly. Tis one invitee I seek, he shall all my mistakes undo. Tis the king in yellow whose great wealth I shall accrue. When his shadow passes through, wealth will come to I and you. Lo, your plans shall surely languish, and this whole town will know anguish for the king as whom they say which shall this city indeed smite. If he comes, you tell him you and I will know his might. I'll be lost within a night. What reward is worth that price? Wearing this expensive clothing, pardon from my family's loathing, lasting till I'm decomposing, all my friends whom strife I've caused. Yes, preparing for this night, their forgiveness is the cause. They shall all be proud because I have brought the king to us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Bravo! Simply splendid. Thanks. Why, thank you. That was actually pretty fun. I haven't gotten to flex my acting chops since high school. You're no stranger to the stage, I can tell. No. <laughs> yeah, I was the theater kid. My school did Macbeth. A virtuoso of the bard, are we? If you've performed Shakespeare, then you must be an actor of sufficient ability to survive my play. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. A leading man, I presume. Yes, I was tree number four. I wasn't aware that was a rule. <laughs> but now you know it is. It's not. You weren't even the leading tree. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. I was actually Macbeth. I thought you said you were a tree. Acting. Oh, you are good. Uh, well, hey, what's happening to you? Don't fret, dearest. Something is simply passing between my planet's light and your bedroom. A cloud, perhaps. Do you know the proverb, wherever the golden light of Carcosa shines, the shadow of the unspeakable one is cast? It's a literal rule. Oh, okay. I can only be wherever the light of my planet star Carcosa shines. In other words, I can't reach you at night when you're not standing in natural light or if anything obstructs your view of Carcosa. That makes sense why she had that weird uh, curfew. That explains why Missy had a weird daytime curfew. She, <laughs> she'd literally vanish from the sunsets. What a Cinderella-like curse, yeah. That also explains how she got in my room. My window may have been locked, but the curtains were open, allowing the light in. So she can't get into my room if I close my curtains? Aw, I was quite enjoying my time with you. I needed to stay a little longer. Oh no, Relax. goodbye. Parting is such sweet sorrow. It may be some time until your sky clears. Until then, I bid you adieu. Uh, blah. Whoa. My hair's still blonde! What is this? What is this? Well, looks like I have one hell of a choice to make. Lynetta, Lynetta hasn't been summoned yet, and Esther is stuck outside for the moment, so I have a moment to collect my thoughts. Hmm. I want to see what happens if we stick with Esther. Between Lynette and Esther, who do I want to smooch? Or maybe more accurately, who am I more afraid of? Honestly, I think I'm a little bit more scared of Lynetta. Um, but I want to see what happens if we stick with Esther. Do I stay with Lynetta? Or do I follow Esther this time around? She is offering twice as many smooches, after all. Yep, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna... I need to make my choice if I want to stay with Lynetta. Then I should focus on casting spells from her book. If I want to smooch Esther, then I should open my window again when the clouds clear and use Esther's book. And if I try going for them both, well, walking down the middle of the road is bound to get me run over. As long as they aren't both in the room at the same time, I should be safe, right? Oh man, what am I gonna do? 
Either way, I need to talk to Lynetta. She might be an avatar of world-ending calamity, but she might be able to help me get my head straight. Speaking of my head, why does my forehead feel kind of sticky? Oh, because of her smooch? We got a smooch, that's why. We should wipe our- can I do that? Can I wipe off my head? Yeah, I can't wipe off my head. Ah, there we go. That way? Lynetta's gotta be- not gonna be upset. Holy shit. Oh, okay. All right. Snuff all the rooms. Close my curtain. Red candle. And now let's just say the words. Oh, what? Did I not shut off? Oh, there we go. My bad, my bad, my bad. Oh. Oh, I forgot. Yep, virtual necklace. Silly me. All right. Yeah, it's me. Hey, Lynetta. It's nice to see her, despite everything I've been through so far. Sure, she may have ended the reality I was from, but she never lied or deceived me in any way. She told me up front what would happen, and I did it willingly. That said, I'm really glad you're here, but... Can you tell me what happened to me? To that world we dated in? That reality fell to me. Nothing there exists anymore. Like a dream that ends. Okay. Just as I thought, only. Then, why am I still here? Why did I survive when the rest of reality didn't? Oh, darling, don't make me say it. It's embarrassing. You're still here because I'm... I'm still dreaming about you. Oh. Everything in existence is being dreamed about by at least one Eldritch God. So as long as you're on my mind, you'll exist somewhere. Oh. That's actually kind of sweet in a terrifying cosmic way. What would happen if every god stopped dreaming at the same time? What if you woke up all at once? Everything, including all of the gods, would cease to be. Wow, and that can just happen at any time. Nah, don't worry. There's about 50 of us total, so the chances of all of us being awake at the same time are low. Got it. There's only like 50 of you and all? She probably knows Esther very closely. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big family, huh? Sorry, family? Family? D do you know Esther? Darling, I thought I told you not to mention other women while we're together. Especially not my sister. Sister? Sister? Ugh, I can't stand that prissy little boyfriend stealing. Donna, have a great relationship with her? Absolutely not. We've been fighting over planets and followers for eons. It wouldn't be a stretch to call us nemeses. <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner must be awkward. <laughs> Phew, good thing I washed my face. Playboy instincts to out there, yes! <laughs> if Lynetta saw the lipstick smear my forehead, I'd be in hot water right about now. Think it ahead, think it ahead. Well, I still, still am in hot water now. Actually, I've gotten involved with her sister. A messy affair is bad enough, but with a family member? I'm toast if she finds out. Esther. Looks like the clouds haven't cleared yet. I won't be able to see her right now if I wanted to. For now, I should work through Lynetta's spells again. Eldritch Hand saved my ass last time. I better cast that one in case I'm unable to talk again. Sheesh, listen to myself. What the hell is wrong with me, man? Darling, what's this I found under your bed? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's my <laughs> Eldritch Encyclopedia. I haven't translated it yet, but the diagrams are useful. Oh, you studied it extensively then. Yes. I sense I've made some sort of mistake. I guess. Why? What's up? Darling, this is a dirty magazine. Oh, is that what it is? Why, really? I thought it was an anatomical guidebook. Big, slippery, shogoth girlfriends volume three. I bet you can learn a lot of anatomy from this. Perv. I said I haven't translated it yet. How was I supposed to know? This girl on the front isn't wearing anything. She's topless. Oh, really? I couldn't even tell. That's a girl? It just looks like an amorphous mass of tentacles to me. Is this what you wish? I look like? Absolutely not. I, I really, truly don't. Trust me. Look, Lynetta, you're smoking hot. <laughs> I could never have eyes for anyone else when I'm with you. You're my dream oh. girl. Sheesh! You're going to make me blush. I seriously didn't know it was a dirty mag, honestly. It's okay. I forgive you. That said, can I keep it? Not a chance. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? Okay, let's 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 do the the ritual. We need to only have that and we need to not wear anything. Yep. There we go. Hello! Shit, it's uh, still as unnerving as I remember. In this reality, this is just my hand now, forever. Ah, it's such a nice day outside. It's 
a little dry for my liking, but we could totally have a date date. Why are you Why here? You open your window? Let a little light in here? No. Oh no. No wait. What? What is it? Uh, uh, are you sure you want to do that? What do you mean? I mean, uh, don't you want to shower first before you go out, like last time? Huh? Why would you suggest that? I don't know. Oh no. Don't tell me. Do I still smell like the ocean? Just a tad salty. Heavens below. I'm so sorry, darling. I'll be right back. No peeking by. I love you. We are such a douchebag. That was a close one. If she opened that window, Esther would have come. Um, can't, like, Esther pop in through here? I would have been a goner. Looks like the clouds have cleared and Lynetta's out of the room. If I want to date Esther, it's go time. Otherwise, if I want to stay with Lynetta, I need to make absolutely sure that that window never opens, ever. It's time to choose. From this point on, my actions will have consequences. Huh? Oh, that's how you swap... That's how you swap books. Okay, cool. Well, um... Let's, uh, let's see what happens when we date Esther, even though I really don't want to. Hey, Esther? <laughs> Do that. What? All I did was say hello. Speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she. Oh, we did this already. Uh, yeah, okay. Backstage in an enclosed room with a mirror. Prepare the host for scene two by doing the following. So we need a mask, robes, and a knife. Robes. I have the knife. When else complete, look in a mirror to ensure. Okay, sure. I can look in a mirror. All right, everything looks in place. I feel a little gussied up. Even for me, this outfit is pretty loud. Yo, we're still bleeding a lot, but even so, the beauty of this whole ensemble is out of this world. If Lynetta's showering in here, I better meet Esther in the other room. All I have to do is stand where the planet's light can reach me and I already know what you're gonna say, your highness. Yellow is more your color than mine, but I still look pretty good, right? You clean up well. I'm impressed. I actually I hate the color yellow. Before my royal court in that. It's a pretty snug fit. The mask almost feels alive, like it's molding to fit my face perfectly. Quite the opposite, dearest. Your face is molding to fit the mask. I figure, you know. I feel a twist of metal digging into my temples. Holy shit. It's stuck to my face somehow. Ow! It really won't come off. <laughs> to mention that we reenact the play with deadly accuracy. From yeah. this point on in the play, your character never removes his mask. So neither shall you. This surely shouldn't be a problem for someone who is planning to be my eternal servant. Correct? Right! I can't even blink anymore. My eyelids are stretched to meet the indifferent metal of the eye holes. The mask and your face have become one. Your every pore is now gilt and gold. This is what? Do I have to wear this to work? When I see family? When I see Lynetta? Wait a minute. Those strange people outside, they're all- Yep, they all had masks stuck to them too. Yep. Past followers who became servants. Is that going to be my fate? Probably. Because that's what I chose. Now I can perform act two. Setting, interior, well lit. So well lit? This is well enough lit, is it not? Nice. Welcome, company much cherished. May my loneliness thus perish to this evening we shall share, which would be wasted by myself. No attendants have arrived tonight, alas, besides thyself. But I'll be beside myself when the king thyself reveals himself. <laughs> Whoa. Lay thine hands upon my bodice, for before you stands a goddess. Know this guest of Goldenrod is merely the first of the night. Let us drink to your great wealth and family and life, lasting till your afterlife all be yours once he arrives. Ah, here we go. Yes, until my schemes may flourish, we shall hunt my empty fortress. Let us dance a whirlwind dervish while we feed our appetites. By thy morrow we shall know if the king came tonight. Midnight marks the final chime. Until that comes, there is still time. May thee graciously obeisance demonstrate a courtly patience. He declines no invitation he receives upon his court. Obeisant? All who live in doomed ye till will know without report. The king arrived by your escort. A prophecy of grim import. Thank you! Thank you very much! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. An immaculate performance, dearest! Bravissimo! 
There's only one more scene to reenact, and then this world will be mine. I probably should have asked before we got to the final act, but this play isn't a tragedy, right? No, it's not. The ending is actually quite hilarious. A comedy! Oh, that's actually a huge relief. What happens? Your character is slain, and all of his wishes come true in an unexpected way. So funny! With his ambitions of greed, influence, and fame, he dies penniless, alone, and infamous. Huh. Wait, my character dies? I'm gonna die? I thought you said it was a comedy. Comedy is merely tragedy from far enough away, dearest. What a take. Is she implying that she thinks my death would be funny? I get that she's an outer god, so human mortals don't really apply to her, but that's gotta be cruel even for her. No way can I go through with that. Sorry, I don't want to die again. I anticipated that you might get cold feet after learning of your character's fate. However... My wrath is terror far beyond a touch of stage fright. So, for your sake, dearest, do the f***ing scene. That's funny. Perform banquet. Retrieve ingredients from storage. Okay, allow the king into the room. Don't make a mistake or a hungry, uninvited guest may arrive. Okay, so... Fridge, red candles, cool, yep, yeah. yep, yeah. king is in the room. Okay, let's go, let's go ahead for it, let's do, yep. Switch, what do you mean switch? What do you mean switch? Oh, oh my gosh. The room is filled with the mouth-watering aroma of perfectly seasoned meat and fresh fruit. There must be a magical component involved here because I see no less than three of my favorite dishes. Esther is strutting towards my bed. Charlie, you don't intend to merely watch me eat, dearest. I didn't think she was going to let me have any. Don't mind if I do. Uh, uh, uh. That's not what I meant. Instead of watching me eat this feast, you'll feed it to me. Oh, what was that? It sounded like groans of murderous anger from outside the door. Was that from the masked stalkers outside? If they've all got masks on their faces, they must be Esther's followers, or even ex-partners. Then their groans were of jealousy? Makes sense. They've been locked outside all this time. I bet they'd kill for the chance to spend any time with Esther. Just a moment, dearest. What is the thread count of your silken sheets? At least 1,000, I presume. Yes. Silk? My blankets are cotton. <laughs> Perhaps I'll just stand while you feed me instead. So picky. If she is that uppity, maybe I'll start with the grapes. Something that'll feed her princess complex. Uh, oh. mm. Delightful. I'm glad. Another. Hey, I think I could have one of these. <laughs> Dream on. My lips have already touched it. If you want an indirect kiss, you'll have to be more clever than that. Oh yeah? So you won't eat anything my lips have touched either? Of course not. So should I eat everything? You were eyeing this cream puff, right? Would you like me to feed you a bite? Oh, heavens below, yes. I am pleased by this new attitude of yours, dearest. Are we gonna eat it? I casually take a bite of the cream puff. What do you think you're doing? Hmm, delish. It's so good, I've never had anything like it. Let me try. Oh, you want a bite? Even though my lips have touched it? Well, if you don't want it, then I guess I can have some right now, right? Hey, hold on! Mmm, it's really delicious. Nothing tastes better than food with a twist of eldritch magics. It's a shame you don't want any of it. Well, what's it gonna be? Watch me eat your favorite dessert, or suffer an indirect kiss? Okay. What was that? I order you to hand over the cream puff! Very well, my king. I offer the other half of the cream puff to her eager hands, but instead... Mm -hmm. I forgot I was hand-feeding her! Her lips are insanely soft against my fingers. Mm -hmm. It really is delightful. Does that count as a third smooch? She's damn cute when she drops her sadistic font. I do more, but I feel those husks staring jealous daggers into my back. They'll tear my head off if I let this go on. Shouldn't we save some for... the play? It'll hurt the performance if we eat the entire set, won't it? Well, let us resume the play. Yes. Whoa, we're really close to the end. Oh, no lights besides open window. Okay. Damn the night and morrow scornful, wicked morning unremorseful. Why, tonight must I be mournful for ambitions unfulfilled. 
After all my preparations, all the daylights I have killed, why is it us only still? Oh, why are my mirishes unfulfilled? <laughs> Is grave and tomb and crypt in which you die. It's within your grease you fry. Dearest host, the end is nigh. Wretched guest, you've come to mock me? For bemusement thou wast hawking, and so in the town you stopped me to watch my schemes fall apart? Strip thy mask, apologize, then hastily depart. Leave thee just by my broken heart. Leave not else in whole or part. Go, for I'm the king in yellow whose long shadow is on your tail, and whose shadow you're in still. Dark as death is now your tail. And that's a little scary. King fatally injures the host. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> Draw thy blade from mine, contusion. My life reaches its conclusion. Cruelty matched by your delusion that you truly are the king. Yes, you would have granted all my wishes, not forsaken me. If indeed you were the king, why would you have murdered me? If I've granted all your wishes, I'm afraid I disagree. All alone you are with all of your remaining family. And as vision turns to darkness, you have claim to all you see. And you'll wear that mask and robe for the rest of all your life indeed. And the strong will fall to illness, haunt your tail with pitiful stillness, and none left alive to witness my ascension to your tail. And from the catacombs shall spill the cries of innocence laid still. He heard from lady and from smithy and from throne to peasant mill. Cries unprecedented in the history of your till. Whales unlike they'll ever be again in dark your till. That your invitation's quill brought the king to black your till. Oh my gosh. What is this? Oh my gosh, no, the game died! I really hope that saved. Yes! Thank you! Oh, thank you! <laughs> You're all blessed to that applause, dearest. The euphoria of a flawless recitation. I actually missed it, but it's fine. Innumerable voices make up the cacophony of cheering outside my door. Fantastical revelry, screams of terror, and sadistic amusement all amidst thunderous applause. The king has come. Smiles, dearest, smiles! Aren't you proud of yourself? So proud. Why... why didn't you use a stage knife? Uh, I'm really bleeding out here. My blood streams from a gaping wound in my chest. My abdomen is unseamed. To ensure you stay in character, call it method acting, if you will. Yeah, okay. Oh, with sweet sorrow, the curtain falls, and the show begins. The stage is now set for you to inscribe the yellow sign. Do this, and I will bestow upon you the smooch I promised. You mean the smooches you promised, plural. You said you'd give me two. And now that's really all you can think about? Oh, it's three hearts until a smooch. Oh, that makes sense. Your world is about to be enslaved by a horror from beyond the stars. You're dying from a stab wound. Yeah, but a deal's a deal. And you're worried about smooches? A deal's a deal. You are an interesting human. It is a pity that you'll soon cast away your individuality for me. Perform the yellow sign. A deal do be a deal. What? If you are going to spend your life with the king, dim lights, leave window open, black fire, black fire, all of the lights need to be off, window is open, Behold, that is what we need. The yellow sign, become my slave, my eternal captive audience, I am entropy, disorder, where things are built tall, I appear to knock them down, monuments, nations, relationships. That's a lot of people. Some of these husks have wedding rings on their fingers. I steal the hearts and minds of the rich or powerful to break them and litter my court with them like gold dust. But why me of all people? I'm broke. Because I am the breeze of chaos that knocks down any tower that challenges the grandness of my court. 
your relationship with my oh. sister was one of those things. Before, I only pursued you because you have a great deal of clout amongst the Nycolin crowd and shrewd wealthy types. You yeah. would have been an incredibly powerful servant who would have been able to draw in countless wayward souls that meet my standards. Well. At least, until that reality ended and you undid all of my hard work. Mm. All of my followers that I had stolen from Lynetta. Gone in an instant. And I had no choice but to abandon that reality. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. Makes but sense. In this reality, I've stolen away her most powerful asset. You. Just as I've stolen every member of my entourage. All the husks, they're bleeding from their chest under their elegant robes. Just like me. All these people, why? Why? Because it's what I do. No, I mean... Why are they still here? Aren't they kind of third-wheeling our moment here? Kick them out! Huh? Such a defiant tone! <laughs> Why aren't you under the effects of the yellow sign? Because we had a deal! I didn't get my are spooch you... yet! Unaffected? Did... Did the spell fail? I don't feel any different. You're supposed to be obsessed with me! Ah, uh, I already was since I first saw you. That's why your little spell didn't work. <laughs> try and resist it all you want, but one way or another, you're my eternal slave from now on. A deal is a deal. Are you proposing to me? I accept. No, dearest, I'm not talking about marriage. What I'm talking about is catering to my every whim, anticipating my every desire, and living solely to please me. Yeah, uh, that just sounds like marriage. No, I'm talking <laughs> about a servitude where you do nothing but kiss the ground I walk on and revere for all of time, a servitude unlike anything on earth, where you never so much as think of anyone else. No, nope, we have that on earth, and it's called marriage. It's, different. it's not. It too. How so? It means no freedom, forever. You are only permitted to do as I say. Yep. And it means preparing every single one of my meals for me, whenever I so wish. Yeah, for sure. And it means <laughs> never being allowed to quit your servitude. You'll never be free of me so long as you live. Until death do us part, Eden. Exactly. Marriage? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, but you're literally just describing being married. I mean, hey, if that's what you want, then I'm in. Let's get married. <gasps> oh, I guess we stole the third smooch. You shouldn't. I... I... I stole you away. I ruined your relationship with Lynetta. I preferred you from the beginning. I already broke up with Lynetta. In the other reality, actually. Why are you being so persistent? That is a lie. You really want to marry me that badly. I just want my smooches. <laughs> trying to act all smooth, so I give you your second smooch. Yes, exactly. Save it for our wedding day. <laughs> it's serious. Oops. Well, he was serious. <laughs> King and white. That's hilarious. That is so funny. Oh my goodness, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed chapter two of this. I certainly did, and I will see you all in chapter three. Have a good one, guys. Bye bye